Hey guys, and how about we play Batman Arkham Asylum? So as you can see here, and as you saw last time, I'm sure, oh I guess right here is where you can see it. Um, we completed all 240 Riddler challenges. However, if you look, where was the character bios? Yeah, and it was this one, this thing. If you check these things, where is it, the cyber messages? Yeah, we don't have the last one. I asked you guys where I could find it, and you so graciously told me. So I'm going to go find it, and then we can start listening. I'm pretty sure this is it. Yeah, he should be right up here, because first there was where Poison Ivy was, right? And then just past that, there was the other place. Yep, Poison Ivy was here. And then there's the other place, as I keep mentioning. And then Clayface beyond that, but I think we just need to go to the middle thing. So I'm doing it. I didn't- I don't remember seeing anything though when I was last here, so something must appear, or is gonna be a cutscene, or something, I guess? Let's see. I'll look around. Hello? Is that a thing? Batman, 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 Batman. Ooh, cross. Haha! <laughs> My name is Quincy Sharp, the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Oh! You have done well to decipher my story. And I pray it has helped you on your path. Well, thanks, Quincy. I trust that through my writings, you will do what is right. Please, I implore you, continue my work. Mm. This city deserves a savior. Continue my work. Okay, cool. So, you know, we'll read all of them, in, or listen to all of them in order. But first, I think that we should start with not him. So, let's see. From the beginning, a very good place to start. Hey look, it's me! It's Batman! Okay, when his parents were gunned down in front of him, young Bruce Wayne resolved to rid Gotham City of the criminal elements that took their lives. He trained extensively to achieve mental and physical perfection, in addition to mastering martial arts, detective techniques, and criminal psychology. Dressing as a bat to prey on criminals' fears, Batman fights crime with the aid of specialized gadgets and vehicles, and sometimes Robin, operating out of his secret Batcave below Wayne Manor. Cool. Now we go to the facts. Real name, Bruce Wayne. Occupation, CEO, philanthropist. I don't think philanthropist is an occupation, but okay. Base of operations, Gotham City. Eyes blue. Oh! Hair black. Height, 6 feet 2 inches, so he's an inch taller than me. Weight, 210 pounds. First appearance, Detective Comics 27. Wait, Batman's first appearance was in issue 27? I thought Detective Comics were Batman's comics. That's kind of weird, but okay, attributes, or attributes, <laughs> trained to physical and mental peak, arsenal of gadgets, vehicles, and advanced technology, inventor, detective, genius level intelligence, expert in most known forms of martial arts, trained in all aspects of criminology, mastery of the physical sciences, computer expert, master of disguise, photographic memory, trained in stealth and espionage techniques, and expert escape artist. Yeah, Batman has a lot going for him there. I'm like, channeling my death battle now. Um, I guess we'll go down, and then down, and then down, and then down as we go through these. And yeah, I'm just going to be reading these and listening to the tapes where applicable. So, um, if you'd rather not, you know, watch all of that, that's awesome. Thanks for clicking on the video in the first place, and you can click off and enjoy something else. In the meantime, here we go. Bruce Wayne. Hey, that's me! Okay, well, not me. But, yeah. Born into the wealthy Wayne family, Bruce Wayne had an idyllic childhood. Although he was given a strong sense of justice by his moralistic and philanthropic parents, Thomas and Martha. After their violent murder at the hands of a mugger, Bruce dedicated his life to battling the criminal element that took their lives. He left Gotham for many years to train his mental and physical abilities across the globe, finally returning to take up the mantle of the Dark Knight. Cool. Bruce Wayne, um, looks well, the same as you'd expect from, you know, Batman. Except, I was thinking with, you know, how Batman's first appearance was you know, issue 27, I was saying, oh, maybe he was Bruce Wayne up to that point. And, you know, he actually, he didn't actually don the disguise. But, um, were Detective Comics not initially just about Batman, or are they still not just about Batman? Because you get, like, you know, the the mystery gang in there or whatever? I don't know. Attributes, trains of, oh, same thing. Cool. Moving on, then. He's his parents. Yep. Story. Thomas Wayne was a gifted surgeon and heir to the Wayne fortune. Dedicated to philanthropy... 
It's a weird word. As much as medicine, he and his wife Martha were well known and respected in Gotham. Martha Wayne shared her husband Thomas's charitable nature and was dedicated to her son Bruce's upbringing. She was well regarded in Gotham City's social circles and helped host lavish charity balls at Wayne Manor. Their tragic murder at the hands of a desperate burglar, Joe Chill, in Gotham's crime alley shook the city to its core and led to years of urban blight. It also inspired their son Bruce to eventually become the Batman. Facts! Not what I meant to press. Facts! Real name, Thomas Wayne, Martha Wayne. Occupation, doctor, philanthropist. Um, Gotham City, blue, brown, black, brown, 6158, 180, 135, and first seen in number 33. Cool. Highly gifted and well-trained surgeon, heir to the Wayne family fortune, dedicated philanthropist, mother to Bruce Wayne, wife to Thomas Wayne. Oh, is this only her? Why would... Why don't they say mother and father to Bruce Wayne, married to each other? That's weird. Okay. Well... Moving on. Joker, here we actually get to listen to some tapes soon. So, an insanely homicidal supervillain, the Joker's white skin, green hair, and blood-red lips belie the chaotic nature underlying his cartoonish appearance. The self-styled clown prince of crime has no superpowers beyond a capacity for incredible violence and a skill at creating deadly mayhem. He frequently concocts elaborate schemes to entrap his arch-nemesis, Batman. Real name, unknown. Occupation, professional criminal. Base of operations, Gotham. Eyes green, hair green, height 6 feet, weight 160 pounds. First appearance, Batman issue 1. Spring 1940, cool. Attributes. Unrepentant homicidal maniac, albeit without a precise psychological diagnosis. Surprisingly strong hand-to-hand -hand combatant. That would be surprising considering how, like, sticky he looks. Yeah. Like, like a stick, I mean, not like, he is sticky. Um, his past is unknown. Conflicting, unconfirmed reports state that he was a failed comedian, a petty thief, and a broken family man. Employs various deadly weapons, often based on party gag items. Frequently uses a toxin that stretches victim's face into a Joker-like grin and causes death. Cool. Here we go. Enter. Why does it have to be uh, dead? Funny. Now let's skip the jokes. Skip the jokes? Hey, Sharpie! Didn't she get my permanent record? Be quiet, clown! Every doctor that has ever interviewed you claims a different type of psychosis. Everything from multiple personality disorders to, well, hmm? the list is endless. Maybe he has everything. Well, she's dedicated. I'll give her that. Okay, so this one. Oh, what, what was the date for this first one? June 16th. <gasps> my birthday! That was on my birthday! How cool. Okay, July 27th, which is not my birthday. Tape patient interview 17. Joker remains uncooperative. Of course. My earlier diagnosis remains true. I believe he enjoys his persona too much. What's up, Doc? Today I thought we'd try something different. <laughs> oh, you make me blush, Doc! I have a girlfriend. <laughs> Dr. Quinzel, I know. I've seen the tapes. I saw what happened. What oh. can I say? I'm a charmer. Anyway, I thought it would be good to talk about your childhood. Oh, ever heard of romance, Doc? I don't give up the goods for free. You'll have to try harder. <laughs> what are you hiding? Didn't you hear me? You scratch my back, Doc, and... Well, I won't have you wrapped in plastic and left in a gutter. That seems fair. It's a fair trade. I wouldn't want people to kill me either. August 1st. Tape patient interview 20. Joker is more interesting than I originally believed. Hmm. When Project Titan is operational, I believe Joker will be the perfect test subject. Good afternoon. Today I thought I'd skip back to our previous conversations about your family. Oh, what was Project Titan before? I don't remember. I was okay. born in a small fishing village. I always wanted to join the circus, but my father wouldn't really let me. I don't believe you. My father was a cop. One week from retirement when a mob... I've seen the movie. What are you scared of? Scared? Yes, scared. There's obviously something. Something 
you she should have Scarecrow. What if right? I'm too scared to remember? It hurts too much. Then I can help you. Ah, oh, Joker, the way that he just messes with people, it's it's kind of scary in a way, you know, just to know that he's out there, you know, not for real, obviously, but These yeah. These are the private notes of Dr. Young. Titan is a success. Oh, good for you. Even my funding worries have been solved after the unexpected donations from Mr. White. Mr. White, ha. Joker has also shown a remarkable interest in the possibility of a cure. Once the protein bonding process is finalized, I will... Dr. Young, you ready? Why would you even record this on the same you interview tape? This is asking for trouble. Someone to you catch you, you know. You sure? We're fine. Aren't we, Joker? Well, if you insist. I'm just outside, okay? So is he here? Did your patient X arrive? Yes, I must say progressing more rapidly than I expected. Uh, but enough of that. Let's talk about you. Let's talk more about your Titan project. My what? How does he know? How do, you, how do I know you are staying strapped to a table in the basement while you pump him dry? Hmm. Would you believe a lucky guess? And that's where she learns she's been toyed with. To finish it off, December 23rd. I've been a fool. Joker was behind it all. Yes, he was. He's Jack Yes, he was. He gave me the money, pulled the strings to release. That'd be creepy to hear. Do you hear me? Wait. How did you get access to a phone? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Doc. Had to split. I hate small confined space. So he just escapes. Because I guess he can. Another lie? Who knows? I certainly don't. But let's not get distracted with details. So, anyway, I want my monster. Not really. I just want my monsters, Doc. And if you don't give them to me, well then, it won't be funny. Right, yeah, see, that would be scary. That's not something you'd want to threaten. Though, these are called patient interviews. That was not an interview. She was just, like, talking to herself and he happened to call at that moment. So stop cheating, game. I know what an interview is. Okay. So, uh, oh, this is Oracle. Okay, the daughter of Gotham City's police commissioner, James W. Gordon, Barbara Gordon, was forbidden by her overprotective father from joining the GCPD. Instead, she took on the identity of Batgirl and was a crime-fighting partner of Batman for years. But that all ended when the Joker shot her through the spine. Ow. Paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair, Barbara adopted the new identity of Oracle, and now aids the Dark Knight with her computer expertise, providing Batman with a constant stream of information in the field to aid his battle against crime. Well, good for you. You figured out something else to do. Real name, Barbara Gordon. Occupation, Information Broker. Gotham City, Blue, Red, 5 foot 11. Oh, Detective Comics number 359. But is that Oracle, or Barbara is a Batgirl? Huh, I don't know. Attributes. Eidetic memory, that's how you say that, right? Almost total recall of everything she sees and reads, which is amazing. Extensive headquarters in Gotham City's clock tower filled with information archives, and high-level hacking and computer skills. Well, cool. Next up, we have... No interview tapes here. Alfred Pennyworth! Yeah, we like Alfred. Alfred Pennyworth, after a varied career, was employed as the Wayne family's butler when Bruce Wayne's parents were killed. Alfred raised a young orphan and reluctantly aided him in his quest to become the Batman. His many skills, ranging from cooking to medicine, make him Batman's staunchest ally, along with a formal demeanor that grounds the Dark Knight and deflects those who might otherwise suspect Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Wayne's true identity. Cool. 
Alfred Pennyworth, Valet, Gotham City, Blue, Black, 6, 160, Batman number 16 of 1943. Wow. Skilled actor, I didn't know that. Trained in emergency medical techniques, proficiency with mechanical and computer systems, expert in domestic sciences, unflappable manner. Unlike Batman, Alfred is willing to wield firearms in times of crisis. Good, because, you know, if you can't kick butt without firearms, you might need firearms sometimes. So, Warden Sharp. Oh, I didn't realize that was the... Oh, and that's why we needed to go where the warden was. I get it. Okay, cool. Quincy Sharp has been running Arkham Asylum for the past three years and has dedicated his life to restoring this... To restoring to sanity... There we go. The so-called supervillains that play Gotham City. He is currently campaigning to become the next mayor of Gotham. To facilitate this campaign, he has instigated stringent new security and experimental research policies at Arkham. Which, you know, I'm sure that whole Arkham Asylum outbreak really helped this campaign. Quincy Sharp, Warden of Ar Arkham Asylum, Gotham City, Blue, Gray, 5, 8, 90, 190. Um, yeah. First appearance, Batman Arkham Asylum. Summer 2009. Wow, I didn't realize that was like five years old, this game. Intense dedication to cleaning up Arkham. Pompous and old-fashioned in Demeter, with a focus on his own political aspirations. Contempt for Arkham inmates and disinterest in the specifics of their treatment masks a cowardly nature. For shame. But the guy who was revealed when we got the last, like, Chronicles of Arkham, that didn't seem like a coward to me. But I guess I didn't read them all. Anyway. Commissioner Gordon. Police Commissioner James W. Gordon dedicated his career to cleaning up the corruption in the Gotham City Police Department, a goal he has come a long way towards accomplishing. He has been equally tough on crime, and in the pursuit of making Gotham City safe for all its citizens, Gordon has forged an uneasy alliance with Gotham's other top crime fighter, the mysterious vigilante known as Batman. Yay, Batman! James W. Gordon, Police Commissioner, Gotham City, blue eyes, white hair, formerly brown, six feet... 180 pounds, and Detective Comets number 27. Comics. I feel like I said comets. Experienced police officer, trained criminologist, proficient in hand-to-hand -hand fighting techniques, really? And expert marksman. I can believe the last one more than the hand-to-hand, -hand, but okay, whatever works. And this guy, Aaron Cash. One of the most senior and respected guards at Arkham, Cash is only afraid of one inmate, Killer Croc, who severely wounded Cash once during a ride at the asylum. His hand, yeah. Well, I guess it's the left one. Cash remains determined, however, to keep the asylum's inmates under control and to conquer his fears of Croc. Aaron Cash, Arkham Asylum Guard, Gotham City, brown eyes, black hair, 6 feet, 185 pounds. First appearance, Arkham Asylum, Living Hell number 1, 2003. Oh, that's cool. So I guess Arkham Asylum was a comic before. I didn't know that. Attributes, great physical strength, excellent reflexes. One of the most experienced guards at Arkham. Lasting enmity with Killer Croc. Is that really an attribute? Okay. Well, Frank Bowles. Frank has been working... Is this the guy who, like, turned traitor? Hmm. Frank has been working at Arkham for eight years. He has twice been suspended for drinking on the job and regularly holds poker evenings in the guard rooms. Frank is desperate to be top dog at Arkham. He fails to recognize that he is considered untrustworthy and generally disliked. Frank Bulls, guard, Gotham City, brown eyes, black hair, 6 feet, 185 pounds, first appearance, Batman Arkham Asylum, the game. Um, arrogant belief that he is the best guard in Arkham Asylum, uses sarcasm to cover up insecurities and failures, <laughs> well who does that? Violent temper has resulted in many injuries to patients, oh that's not good. Okay, and this person, Dr. Penelope Young, oh that's what she looks like. Penny Young was always a bright... Right. Brilliant student who is prepared to do anything to advance professionally. She's built up a reputation for being a cold, calculating woman, focused only on the project at hand. She was hired at Arkham Asylum by Warden Quincy Sharp to head up the Asylum's research department, and to finally restore to sanity the more deranged of Gotham City supervillains. Penelope Young, head of research, Arkham Asylum, blue eyes, brunette hair, not brown in her case. Five feet, six inches, 121 pounds, Batman Arkham Asylum. Attributes, graduated from Gotham University with top honors, good for her. Dedicated to the pursuit of a psychiatric cure for various forms of criminal insanity. Highly focused on career ambitions, intolerant of people who get in the way of her work. Cool. And here we have someone with tapes. Oh, 
Mr. Zaz. A true sociopath, Zaz grew up in a life of ease but nonetheless became a serial killer. Indiscriminate in his prey, body count is the only thing that matters to Zaz. He takes pleasure in arranging the corpses of his victims in lifelike poses before carving a mark for each of his victims into his own body. He is saving a special spot for Batman. Maybe. Maybe it's over the heart. I don't know. Maybe he's weird and has a different special spit. Okay. Victor Zaz. Professional criminal. Gotham City. Blue eyes. Blonde hair. He has hair? What? Okay. I thought he was bald. Or shaved or something. Height. 5 feet 8 inches. 150 pounds. First appearance. Batman. Shadow of the Bat. Number 1. June 1992. Sociopath with no regard for human life. No pattern of killing making him difficult to track. Compulsive need to kill others. And here we go. Taped patient evaluation one. Patient name is Victor Zaz. Diagnosed clinically insane after the murder of at least 20 women in the Gotham area. Hello, Victor. Person. I'm Dr. Cassidy. Not that you should Seeing do it. this is our first session, let's spend some time getting to know each other. I don't need to know you, Miss Cassidy. Everything is meaningless. Don't you think that's a very negative outlook on life, Victor? You've no doubt read my file. Yes. Yes, I have. It says you come from a wealthy family, mm -hmm. that your parents died. Like Batman. And how you lost all the money gambling. Probably not like and Batman. None of it matters. Why do you keep saying that, Victor? Because the only thing that does matter is the mark. Mm. Have you seen my work, Miss Cassidy? If you're referring to the marks on your... Of course I mean my tally marks. And I have a space for yours. For some reason, I find it funny that he calls them tally marks. Tally is just such a weird, weird little word. Taped patient evaluation five. Victor is not responding well to treatment. But I guess he actually is crossing Victor, them at the five, yesterday so... Yesterday, we spoke about the people you killed. Ah, the zombies. They are all people, Victor. They are zombies. Oh, yeah. That's why. Continuously shuffling through the daily grind, waiting for someone to... You mean, kill them. The police report states that you've murdered, or liberated, if you like. Why would she, why would she agree with that? Just don't months. go with it. Each had her throat slit and was left... posed. They were all lucky to be chosen to receive my gift. I doubt they would agree with you. Really? Yeah. How about you, Miss Cassidy? As you take the elevator to your apartment each night, Open the six locks to apartment 433. Six locks? Oh. Remember you forgot to buy your cat food. Again? How do you know where I... sit down on your favorite red chair, cat on lap, just waiting for something to happen. I can make it happen, Sarah. I am your salvation. Wait, who is this doctor again? Because... It was Penny Young. I must have missed who was doing the interview here. Zaz is a freaky man, as you can tell with the whole salvation thing. Like it's like he's obsessed with you know his own marks and all that and killing people. Like they said in the facts, you know, compulsive need to kill people. Um, but that he also has this like sick feeling that he's doing something right. I don't know. Yeah, he makes something happen, but then it's but then nothing can ever happen to them again. It's bad reasoning, Zaz. Patient's name is Victor Saz. For Sarah the record, Cassidy, okay. The patient has transferred from Dr. Cassidy, yeah. who is on okay. leave after the incident last week. Hello, Victor. Please take so a seat. So now is this Dr. Young? Guards, you can leave us. Sorry, Doctor. Warden's can't remember. I can't leave you alone with him. I understand. Hello, Victor. How are you feeling today? Victor, I can't help you if you don't speak. You hardly gave him time. Depressed. Does that help you? Can you get into my mind, Doctor? Why depressed? Mm. I'm just thinking about the one that got away. The one I chose. I needed the mark. I want the mark! Aww. Zaz is all sad. I don't really feel bad for him, he's a serial killer. Recently. Response to medication has been poor. Mm. Creepy. Guard! Get him out of here! You heard the doctor. Get out. Didn't you hear me? He's got a knife! 
Get a try and get him! Get a try and get him! Oh god! He's on Bill! Poor Bill. Let's get him off! Let's get him off! We need help here! Um, yeah. Bill didn't make it. Poor Mr. Bill. Case study notes. December. Oh, so the last one isn't as. They're not necessarily interviews. That's good to know. Victor has been in isolation I'm since out of the water. attack on the guard last week. As I wait for him to be brought up to me, I have had time to review his notes. I am increasingly worried. He cannot be cured. He has no empathy for his victims. Well, yeah, sociopath. Deep down, I believe he views all of us as potential victims. Doc, are you okay? What's happening? He doesn't even it's view sad. them as victims, you know? He's gone. Oh, God! Don't worry, Doc. You're the safest place. He's definitely left the island. Of course. That's bad. But someone needs to alert the authorities. He'll need to kill again. Do you understand me? Needs to. Oh, no. He's gone after Dr. Cassidy. Poor Sarah. Sarah, are you okay? Not young, Gretchen. Okay. Hold on. There's someone at the door. Sarah! Do not answer the door! Can you hear me? Do not answer the door! It says! He's free! We don't even know what happens. We don't even know.